Welcome to the fourth Ready to for Business webinar series session organized in partnership with the Cayman Islands government. Before we begin, I'd like to inform you that this session is being recorded and will be uploaded to the Chamber's YouTube channel. By attending today's webinar, you agree to have your name and other interactions posted on the internet. During today's presentation, I also ask um, other than the presenter to keep, to keep your camera off and your Microsoft uh, microphone on mute during the presentation. You can post questions to the chat at any time during the presentation. There'll be an opportunity to ask questions at the conclusion. The Ready for Business webinar series has been developed to help employers and employees prepare for the reopening of our borders and a, a coexistence with COVID-19. The Chamber of Commerce represents over 600 businesses in the Cayman Islands, and we continue to offer guidance and support, standing as a trusted source of information for the business community. Thank you for joining us this morning and for the Employer's Guide to Applying for Government Assistance. By watching this webinar, you will learn how to apply um, to, for loans and grants under the Government Assistance Program. The presentation will also cover government fees, exemptions, and other kind of assistance available to businesses or employees, including retraining opportunities. So the format of today's webinar session is as follows. It'll be a 20 to 30 minute presentation, followed by a question and answer session. And today's speakers will try to answer as many of your questions as possible from the chat feature. Trevor Gibbs is a senior policy advisor at the Ministry of Investment innovation and social development, and he'll be our main presenter. Trevor has been a civil servant for 12 years. He previously worked at the Public Service Pensions Board. He'll be joined by Althea West Myers, the director of the Cayman Islands Center for Business Development. Althea has worked in small business development at the policy and operations level across the region for, for the past 15 years. I now welcome Trevor, who will deliver his, the presentation. Good morning, Trevor. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, uh, Will, for the introduction uh, and the opportunity to present this morning. Um, just to um, put some a uh, little bit of additional context um, before we start. Um, the uh, Ministry of Investment, Innovation, and Social Development um, uh, has responsibility for a number of departments, one of which being um, the Center for Business Development. Um, under the Investment Division, um, uh, which uh, I am the Senior Policy Advisor for, um, we have the Center for Business Development, we have the uh, Intellectual Property Office, uh, and we have Invest Cayman. Um, so in terms of, of government grants and stipends, um, the grants and stipends that fall under the remit of this ministry um, are administered through the Center for Business Development. Uh, and those are the, the grants um, and stipends that we're going to be able to speak to today. Um, there, there may be other stipends and grants um, that fall under the remit of other ministries. Um, we won't be able to cover those today, um, purely because they're outside of, of our remit. Um, but uh, certainly uh, when those uh, grants and stipends come available, um, perhaps there might be an opportunity for those entities to speak to those at a future date. Okay. Um, so without further ado, um, I will uh, begin. Uh, can everyone see the screen and the presentation? Yes. Yep, okay, thanks Will. Uh, so this morning, um, we will be discussing uh, the Cayman Islands Center for Business Development. Um, we'll go into uh, some of the previous business stipend uh, programs that have been administered, um, the rationale behind those, so you get an idea of the types of assistance that um, government um, has, has been providing. Um, and then we will discuss the current stipend program um, that is in place right now um, that is focused on um, micro and small uh, tourism based businesses. Um, and uh, just as a, a heads up, the 
um, the window uh, for application will be closing um, on end of day on Monday for this program. So if you haven't already um, applied, we would certainly encourage you to do so um, by, by end of play on Monday. So the Cayman Island Center for Business Development um, was originally established in 2019 uh, under the former Ministry uh, of Commerce, Planning and Infrastructure. Um, the um, intent uh, for that department um, was at that time, um, based on the strategic pillars that you see there, um, strengthening the entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial ecosystem, institutional learning and growth, um, and enterprise development. So um, following elections in 2021, uh, the center was moved to this current ministry, which is Ministry of Investment, Innovation, and Social Development. Um, those strategic pillars remain um, with the addition of um, the Center for Business Development uh, falling under the division of investment um, to allow for um, sort of a global um, pathway for, for local businesses. So the, the Center for Business Development um, will nurture, will develop um, local small, micro and medium sized businesses, um, bringing them to the point that uh, if, they, if they wanted to, if they were ready to, that through the investment division, uh, they could then uh, have opportunities for um, things like angel investment, um, to, to go to um, international markets with their products, uh, so on and so forth, okay? Um, under the Center for Business Development, um, there are a number of services and programs that, that they administer. Um, they are a um, relatively small team, but a very hardworking team. Um, and those programs um, include um, business development services, um, which are which is quite a broad um, range of services. Um, they also provide technical assistance. So um, while uh, businesses they may be able to advise, advise businesses uh, generally on development um, practices, they also um, have a program with um, outside um, vendors um, or experts to provide technical assistance to um, two small businesses in their program. So there's a the non-residential um, advisory program, and then there's a residential business and incubator program, which I will discuss um, here in a second. Um, the, um, the residential business incubator program um, currently hosts 16 businesses, um, uh, business owners, uh, right at the facility. Um, which is um, uh, geared to having um, all of the space, um, all of the equipment needs for um, micro and small businesses to to get started um, and to to grow and develop to a, a fully functioning um, and viable business. Um, those business owners have space, um, like I said, at the facility. Um, uh, and they are supervised by a business advisor. Um, the space is available to them um, all through the day, uh, the, the regular working week for sure, um, and and allows them really to um, to to go from from strength to strength um, without having to um, take on the burden of of finding rent, um, of finding office space on their own at a very early stage in the business um, in the business development cycle. Um, and that's a two-year program um, that is, is currently underway. And Ms. Althea, that's that's been underway since April of this year. Is that correct? That is correct, yes. Yep. Um, so in addition to that program, uh, they also provide the student consulting program uh, in conjunction with UCCI. Uh, and they're also in the process of um, getting the mentorship program um, fully functional and up and running, which is an additional sort of business development advisory type of program. 
Um, Miss Althea, was there is there anything else there that you'd like to elaborate on that I may have missed? I think you covered it, Trevor, um, in terms of the technical assistance and, and guidance that we provide to business business development assistance. That is, you covered the major issue, major points. Yes. Okay. So um, after being established in, in late uh, 2019, um, as you might imagine, a, a, a young department trying to get itself um, squared away, um, it didn't take very long before um, the, the plans for them to develop um, their services to develop the department um, were put on hold um, when border closures uh, happened in March of 2020. Um, so a number of resources that um, uh, were flagged for for uh, business development um, programs um, had to be um, diverted towards um, providing business stipend programs. Um, and that was in response to the impact of COVID-19 and border closures on micro and small businesses in the Cayman Islands. So, um, in uh, Miss Althea, those programs started, was it in July of 2020? The actual, the, the first disbursements were made in May. May, right. So, so two months after border closure, um, the, the Business Development Center was um, back up and running full gear, um, providing stipends to businesses. Um, and as of July 2021, when those the, the previous round of stipends was completed. Uh, they had issued um, stipends and grants to 2,253 businesses um, and, or sorry, 2,253 grants and stipends were awarded to businesses um, of a value of approximately $9.5 million. The first round of programs uh, were delivered in two phases. So the first phase um, was paid to small businesses um, and they were allotted $3,000 um, paid over uh, two tranches. So um, the first tranche uh, received the application, the application was processed and approved, received the first round of money. Um, after then um, using that money and providing receipts to show that the money was used to, towards uh, business activities, there was a second tranche um, paid uh, of the second half, which then totaled $3,000. The eligibility criteria for that particular phase was quite broad, um, so as to be able to provide relief to as many businesses as possible. Okay, there wasn't um, a sort of a directive that it was only focusing on, on purely tourism businesses or uh, purely water sports operators. It, they tried to be as broad as possible to help as many businesses as possible. In the second phase, um, this was intended uh, to identify and support businesses that they believed had a viable market um, and were likely able, um, would be able to withstand the, the ravages of COVID-19. Uh, so a, a little bit a more of a targeted approach in terms of the businesses that they were going to be able to help um, and that, that they were focusing on. So um, the applicants um, in a similar process to the first phase, but the applicants in this instance were asked to identify their strategic priorities. Um, and then with the assistance from technical advisors um, and the business development center to choose from one of five of the combination or a combination of the packages, um, which included uh, wage subsidy, digital enablement, commercial rent assistance, business process innovation, and business continuity plan. So for some businesses, um, they focused on maybe one of those five. Others um, applied for a combination of the packages. Okay, um, and and those those benefits ranged uh, quite substantially um, in the amounts that were allotted. Uh, Miss Alcy, was there is there anything I, in addition uh, for those two phases? You're doing quite well, Trevor, no? You've <laughs> covered it. <laughs> so those phases, um, <clears throat> the first round of stipends um, were, um, the, the window for that and disbursements were closed um, in, in July uh, of this year. 
uh, July 2021. So, so a little over a year worth of um, of stipends and and applications being received and processed. Um, <clears throat> as we continued with um, we the government continued um, with um, making assessments of um, border reopening um, when that was or wasn't going to happen. Um, the um, the parliament went back um, on September 1st of this year um, and approved an additional uh, round of funding uh, for two separate stipend programs um, that were designed to assist small and micro businesses. But this time we, they were focusing specifically on businesses that operated in the tourism industry. Um, back in September, as you may remember, um, there was already conversations about border reopening, um, when that might happen. It was hoped that it would happen this year. Um, then there was sort of a pause. Um, and the, this stipend program was really um, designed to, to, to uh, help businesses to um, gear up and become prepared for reopening. Okay. Uh, and it was g g aimed mostly at, uh, or entirely at, small and micro businesses, okay? So um, after the funding was approved um, in parliament, the um, Center for Business Development was then tasked with um, administering the first of the two programs. So the first program um, began uh, five days after the, the money had been approved at parliament on September 6th. Uh, and that program was initiated to support specifically um, land and water sports operators um, with wildlife interaction zone or WIS license um, businesses. Okay, um, that would be mostly um, folks who operate um, in or around um, Singray City in the North Sound, um, etc. For the most part, <clears throat> um, a little bit different from the previous programs. Um, this program provided a business stipend specifically for um, the business itself, but there was also now consideration for assets because in order for a business to be able to prepare to reopen, particularly um, tour operators, um, the business is one thing, uh, the assets, the boats, the jet skis, um, the buses uh, is another. So uh, business stipend and asset grants were included in this round of, of programs. So the, the window for that particular program um, closed on September 24th, 2021. Um, and there are um, still uh, payments being made um, under that program, uh, but only to those who have already applied and, and been approved. So following that, um, the closure of that program on November 8th, um, which was uh, a week ago, um, the second stipend program was initiated, uh, again, to support micro and small businesses, specifically in the tourism sector. Um, but this program was designed to capture those, as many of those who were not included in the first round of programs. Um, so for this particular program, which is currently still um, open, as I mentioned at, at the beginning of the presentation, uh, will be open for applications until uh, close of play on Monday. Um, in order to qualify for this particular stipend, um, these are the criteria uh, that you can see on the screen, okay? Um, so uh, business owner, owners um, need to be compliant with operations as stipulated in the trade and business license. Water sports businesses must operate outside of the wildlife interaction zone. Um, because uh, again, as I mentioned, this program is designed to, to help to capture the groups who were not included in the first round. Um, and that first round was specifically more for the uh, WIS licensed operators. Um, independent taxi and tour bus operators uh, will be included in this as well. Um, restaurants are included, um, but must be able to, to establish that they have um, 
in excess of the 75% tourist patronage um, prior to, to the lockdown. So prior to the 1st of March, 2022. Um, all businesses must be at least 60% Caymanian owned. Um, and business must have been in operation at least one year prior to lockdown. Um, business must currently be in operation and the application must be submitted uh, within the time period um, given. Okay. As I mentioned, the eligible businesses um, include restaurants, um, independent taxi operators, taxi dispatchers, um, land tour operators, and water sports operators. Um, much like the, the first program, the um, stipend includes not just, um, not just business uh, related costs, but asset related costs as well. Okay, so you see the list of, of um, things that the, the stipend can be utilized for there on the screen. Okay. So um, the stipends are broken down by category as follows. Um, and, and there are the disbursements that, um, that are being allocated per business. Um, it's a one-time payment um, that is, again, inclusive of that money can be used for business-related um, items as well as um, asset maintenance um, and retention um, type of, of costs as well. And as I mentioned previously, uh, the window for application is closing on Monday, um, November 22nd. Uh, so that'll be the end of day on Monday. Um, there, once disbursements have been made from this program, um, there are, um, th this, this will be closed as we certainly enter um, a new budget cycle, um, a new two-year budget cycle for 2022, 2023. Um, so the, the funding that had been approved um, was approved in this current budget cycle. 21-22. Um, I'm not aware uh, at the moment uh, of any um, plans for 2022, but certainly I, I'm, I'm certain that um, that Will and the Chamber um, will continue um, uh, productive conversations with the government um, if it is um, if it is deemed that, that they would like um, or would support uh, additional. Um, programs in the future but at the moment um, this is this is it in terms of of the disbursements that are done through the center for business development uh, again there, there may be other um, grants and stipends in the future um, under the remit of other ministries but i wouldn't be able to speak to those um, and i'm not aware of any um, of those either so that is um that is the conclusion of, of my presentation. Um, if there are any questions, um, certainly love to be able to answer as many of those as we can. Thank you, Trevor. There, there are some questions in the chat. Um, I think Althea responded to one of them already. Um, will there be any help to businesses that do not fall into this category, to the categories that you, you mentioned? And, the answer is no at this time, right? That's correct. So my suggestion, uh, Ronald, would be, and other small business owners that are fall outside these categories, is to make representation to the chamber. Uh, let us know um, what categories they, you fall into, and we can lobby government to see if they, in fact, would open this up for some assistance. Um, there's another question here. Um, I see that restaurants are covered. What about licensed tourism accommodation owners? We are in the same position as the restaurants and a different services offered compared to long, local long-term rentals. Right. Um, so uh, again, unfortunately, the, the, um, the, the boundaries of this particular stipend are, are set. That's what that's what they are. Um, I'm not aware of of any um, of any other 
stipend programs that cover um, licensors and accommodation owners. Um, I do understand the position um, that that I you do. would be. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, that's the. I mean, the reality is it is what it is. But I guess the sense for the people on the call it would be, you know, has has it the response been a very positive one? I mean, what what are the number of applications you have for this this second round of funding, Trevor? And do you think there'll be any money left over, which could be redirected to some of the areas that people are on this call are talking about? Right. Um, so certainly the the first um, the first round um, we we did see um, a, a very good response. Um, there were 192 uh, businesses that applied in the first round, um, which was the, the one that was focused more on, on the WIS licenses. Um, Miss Althea, you, you, uh, you'll correct me if I'm if I'm wrong here, but I think it was 150 or 160. Um, of those 192 that were actually approved. Um, and in the second round, I, I will have to ask um, Ms. Althea if she has a, um, a fair figure um, of how many have applied thus far. Well, um, as to how many were approved from the first phase, it was 154 of the 192 that applied that were approved. Um, as, as it relates to this current phase, we're still collecting applications. It's difficult for us to say just yet how many we have in hand, but based on the volume that we that we have, I'm pretty sure it's been over well over 100 by now. And and this application period closes on January, on Monday, Monday. as yeah. Trevor said, yes. Yeah. And Trevor, just a question for you. The people who are, are applying for these funding uh, you're ensuring that their pension and health and and all of their trade and business licenses are up to date, or are you giving them flexibility? Or because of the because of the pandemic, how do you handle the process where somebody may not have been paying for their pension or health or trade and business license? Sure. So um, the trade and business license. Um, has been uh, is something that that we um, certainly um, ask for as part of the of the the process. Um, uh, there is um, uh, because that that is that is is what is required uh, under legislation. Um, there are instances where where there may be um, a legislation that supersedes a trade and business license, um, but. Uh, on a whole, that yes, we 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 ask for um, persons to provide the trade and business license because part of the of the requirement um, is that the business is is operational um, and is is viable um, in order to to apply for the stipend. Um, there are some instances where um, where uh, business owners are applying um, and sort of saying, I I have a trade business license, I need to renew um, this other license that I have to operate, let's say, for example, a, a PTU license. Um, so, uh, but I need to, to be able to, um, to repair my vehicle um, in order to then um, pass inspection. Um, so there is consideration um, sort of on a little bit of a case by case um, for, for those persons and we ensure that the money um, is spent to repair the vehicle. Um, and once that's done, then they can then apply for the, the other licenses that they need to be able to be a viable business. Um, in terms of um, of uh, pension payments, um, it's obviously, I think I don't know if you'll be able to speak to that one, but um, I don't think that we're going as far as to check every single um, every single payment um, that is made or needs to be made. We certainly have provided funding and one of the criteria um, under the funding is that that funding can be used towards um, employee um, payments. So that would be salaries, et cetera. Um, so we're certainly um, making sure that funding can be used to ensure that people are keeping up to date with salaries and pension, et cetera. Right, so we are not requesting compliance as it relates to pension and that kind of thing. We are, we are expecting that the funds will be used to cover those expenses. 
But in order to be able, you, you have to establish that you are a legitimate business and we require the trade and business license in order to do that. It's against the law to be operating without the trade and business license once you're involved in any kind of trade in the Cayman Islands. And so we are sticking by that. However, as Trevor indicated, in some instances where persons, for example, some persons who do um, operate with a PTU and are used to operating only with a PTU, we are making some allowances so the application can be made without that. Um, in some instances, can be made without the, you're presenting a TBL, but thereafter we expect that you'll use the funding to ensure that you are no compliant with the, with the regulation requiring you to have a TBL. Again, um, I guess the, the question for some people, and again, De Debbie Zong here, she said, uh, might other small tourism businesses at least get a break on the TBL? Um, maybe you can tell us whether there's any plans maybe in the future, the ministry to kind of take a deeper look at going forward. Tourism is not going to be the same uh, for several, several months. Um, even with opening the borders, the volume of tourism is nowhere near what is going to be needed to sustain some of the businesses that we have. So I guess the question, Trevor, is that whether the ministry is contemplating any, any other policy strategies going forward to address what probably is going to be a protracted downturn. Right. So the while while the the Ministry of Investment, Innovation, Social Development, um, and the, the Center for Business Development um, are involved in a stipend program that at this point is geared to uh, specifically to tourism uh, related businesses. Um, the the general remit of ensuring that the tourism product um, of the Cayman Islands is is intact and is vibrant um, and all the policies around um, making sure that that is, is possible in a post-COVID uh, world, in a, in a border reopening type of, um, uh, of a world, really is uh, the remit of the Ministry of Tourism. Um, we are um, providing a specific program through the Business Development Center aimed at, at, um, at businesses. Um, but the general policies around making sure that um, that the tourism product and, and the tourism industry generally um, is able to to bounce back um, in a very real way, which we all want very much, um, is actually really the, the remit of the Ministry of, of Tourism. So I wouldn't be able to speak to okay. that specifically. But um, again, I guess we can probably just speak to the Ministry of Tourism after, because I, I understand uh, Debbie's point and a couple of other these questions that are in the, this chat. Um, even during some of the conversations I've had with some of our members is that they just, they fall outside of the beltway, so to speak, with yep. a lot of these funding programs. Yep. And they actually are providing some good business services on the island. It's just, they're in, they're in never, never land, if that's the right word. <laughs> um, um, and so that's why I'm just asking in terms of what your ministry is doing, if there is funding left over from this round of whether it could be contemplated that you'd expand or reevaluate the stipends that you could award. Right. So um, <clears throat> we, I, I couldn't, I couldn't find the words in a million years um, to explain um, the difficulty um, that uh, we, we went through to try to include as many as many entities as many types of businesses as possible with the funding that was available um, in the time frame that we had um, if it was if it if if funding permitted uh, if, if the government was was able to find the funding um, if it was up to, to just that um, and it was up to everyone's hearts and wishes we would just be able to to uh, provide as much to everybody um, but unfortunately, uh, we had to to make some policy decisions um, about the sectors that we could help um, and the amounts that we were able to to uh, allocate um, based on the budget that was given to us. Um, certainly, uh, we we 
um, would would consider um, the future programs. Um, as I mentioned, I'm I'm certain that um, Will yourself and and the chamber will will make representation uh, to the government again, um, as as I know that you have ongoing, uh, very productive um, conversations um, with the government. Um, and certainly representation from your members uh, about their needs um, will go a long way. Um, but in terms of the funding that has been allocated for this budget cycle, as I mentioned, the, uh, the budget cycle um, for, for what we're dealing with uh, is the 2020, uh, 2021 budget cycle. And the upcoming budget cycle will be the 2022, 2023 cycle. So any funding that has been approved in 2020 and 2021, um, that that ends on the 31st of December um, uh, of 2021. Okay. Then there's a, a brand new a brand new budget for 2022-2023. So any funds that 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 were or weren't used uh, in this current budget cycle, um, they aren't brought over into 22-23. Um, so we really are trying to use. Um, as much or all of the of the funding that was approved for this cycle in these programs. Okay, so anybody have further questions? I don't see any other questions in the chat. Um, I don't want to keep you guys too long. Just wanted to make sure that you were aware of this fund these funding opportunities and the stipend program. Um, I guess Trevor, thank you very much for your time and for putting this together. Just to remind everybody again, the deadline for this is Monday. So if you haven't visited it, you can find this on the Center for Business Development's website. Is that correct for the stipend? Oh, it's certainly on the government website. Um, the, the Center for Business Development website is-, um, is Maybe is you guys can post that to the chat, if you don't mind, where people can actually apply so that uh, if there's an email or a website that they need to go to. Sure. Um, okay. I'm, I'm putting that in the chat now. Excellent, thank you. And again, for the others on this call, um, again, as we go forward, it's gonna be, um, you know, hopefully we're, we have a lot of optimism about the slow reopening. Um, and but still there are still a lot of small micro and small businesses that rely on tourism and other areas that are still struggling so if you want to um you know let us know how you feel about these things um, please send something to me at the chamber um, i'll send my email address I'll, I'll post it so that we're made aware of your the concerns of the small micro and small business sector which represents really about 70 over 75, nearly 75% of our membership. So again, we're here for you and we're here to advocate on your behalf. So I'd like to thank uh, both Trevor and Althea for your presentations and responding to the questions. And I certainly hope everyone has a great weekend and stay safe. And I'd like to say again, thank you for joining us for this webinar and um, like I said, appreciate your time. Thank you, Trevor. Thank you, Althea. Thank you, Will. Thank you to everyone who uh, joined the webinar. Appreciate the opportunity to speak. You're welcome.